Hi guys. It is a blissfully rainy day here in the end times. Hallelujah. A rainy Monday. Monday, June 12th, 2023. So I am returning from the laundromat and the grocery store in the lovely town of Owego, New York. And uh, so anyway, as I mentioned in my rant on the drive down here, so I just had one of the more interesting guests I have ever had uh, show up at my vacation rental business uh, here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. This is a fellow from, uh, he was here from Israel, from Israel. And he is actually, he had never been uh, to the U.S. before in his life. Never once set foot over here. Uh, he's 34 years old, this man. 34 years old. And so he actually came here last week. This, this is some gay dude. He and his fiance, uh could not legally get married, I guess, in, uh, in Israel. So they came to New York City, which was the cheapest ticket they could find. They flew to New York, uh, got married uh, in New York City, and then, I guess what is that, his, his husband uh, had to fly back to be back at work this morning. So, uh, it was a whirlwind honeymoon, I guess, for these two dudes. So, uh, I guess his now husband actually, who lived most of his life uh, here in the U.S., actually has landed a job at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, starting in the middle of August, so this fellow, um, what shall we call this fellow, uh, anyway, I can't think of a, uh, what should, we'll call him Milton. Uh, so anyway, uh, this fellow Milton, you know, he doesn't have a job waiting. So anyway, he wanted to stick around here as long as he had flown all the way to the U.S., and so he is on this like a whirlwind tour around the area, uh, basically uh, meeting all of the Americans that he can, you know, going to all of these different uh, Airbnb places and stuff and meeting up with uh, his soon to be fellow Americans, trying to figure out what the hell we're all about and of course to practice his English. He's got very good English, but he's very, very self-conscious about his English. So he is here cramming uh, on English lessons and living with Americans. <laughs> so he thought bugs in a jar sounded like an interesting experience. So he came here for a couple of nights and uh, I have to say this uh, young man well 34 year old soon to be middle aged man officially uh, was quite the character trying to figure out Americans you know I told him that I had been trying to figure out my fellow Americans for 63 years and had no fucking clue what Americans are about. I don't understand Americans. I'm an I'm in, in completely embarrassed to be an American. So uh, it, uh, so, so don't use me as an example. So uh, he was here for two nights, and so for the past two nights, I have been sitting around uh, talking to this fellow. Uh, you know, trying to prepare himself for his new life in the United States. And so this guy, 
and and he doesn't deny. I mean, I didn't use the term limp dick uh, lefty around the guy, but he is your classic limp dick lefty. This guy, all right. Uh, I mean, he's buying into the whole Green New Deal. He is a techno utopian. He's some kind of, you know, one of some kind of computer geek. I don't know what all those guys do. So some sort of high tech guy uh, spent uh, several years in the in working intelligence for the Israeli army. Uh, so he has intelligence training, college educated, obviously very intelligent, uh, somewhat well informed if you count, you know, probably reading Israel's version of the New York Times and listening to Israel's version of uh, NPR. Uh, but he's, he, you know, he's pretty much down the the limp dick lefty New York Times quaffing uh, NPR Kool-Aid drinking uh, liberal lefty you know for a little bit he knows about it he thinks Joe Biden is doing a pretty good job uh, doing a pretty good job for what he has to work with so anyway, uh, he was really uh, plying me for all sorts of information. So <laughs> obviously, he wants to know what in the hell bugs in a jar means. He didn't really even know the definition of the word jar. Uh, so he wanted to know why I named my... Uh, my vacation rental place bugs in a jar farm and I tried to give him a lesson in, uh, in psyops in uh, psychological operations uh, which is what bugs in a jar is a you know it's a metaphor for psyops. What is this stupid motherfucker? Does he want to fucking uh, go around me or not? You know, you give people a chance to fucking go around you. Anyway, uh, so I'm, you know, explaining uh, how how bugs in a jar <clears throat> is uh, is a metaphor for a psyops and you know where just ordinary people going about their business minding their own business uh, you know doing what they can with their lives and then the the, the jar shakers uh, the controllers whatever you want to call them you know just start shaking up the jar to get us all divided and conquered so uh, you know they can put more money in their pockets and consolidate their uh, corporate and political power and all of this so he was I think he was somewhat understanding what I was talking about but of course he wanted an example of a psyops and I said well I, you know, I, I got this place in the year 2020, uh, you know, when the corona panic started, that the corona panic is the single biggest psyops in the history of humanity. So that started off the whole, uh, you know, the whole conversation uh, about corona panic. So this fellow you got to understand he is a very healthy he eats well he exercises he's 34 year old slim healthy man he has uh, been vaccinated not one time not two times not three times uh, I mean yeah but three times so he has been vaccinated three times a healthy slim 34 year old man 
uh, has been vaccinated three times and he has gotten corona panic twice. And so, of course, he wanted to know uh, about, uh, you know, he just assumed uh, that I had been vaccinated. And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I'm 63 years old and have never been vaccinated. And he wanted to know why. And I said, because I have never seen one iota of evidence that it is in my best interest to get vaccinated, what be it, uh, corona panic, uh, what swine flu, bird flu, uh, you know, any of it, uh, that I, I have not seen one iota of evidence uh, that it's in my best interest to be vaccinated. And so he was, so obviously he latched onto this. So we get into this conversation and, you know, he starts talking about, the, you know, all of the people uh, who died in Israel of the virus. And so I told him, you know, to look it up. Uh, I, ta I taught him the percentage calculator and he ran the percentage calculator and found that 0.2% of Israelis uh, have died of corona panic. 99.8% of Israelis have not died of corona panic. And so then he started, uh, then, 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 you know, then Italy came up. And he goes, well, it was a lot different in Italy, a hell of a lot more people. So uh, I said, look it up. So he looked up Italy and found that 90, not, not 99.8, but 99.7% of Italians uh, had not died of, have not died of Corona panic or with Corona panic. We didn't even get into the difference between of and with. And so we got in that discussion. So he reads 0.2% of the population as a big group. You know what I'm saying? He thinks that this is a horrible, uh, you know, just, just an a a absolute tragedy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that 0.2 percent, and, and I'm looking at it, I've been laughing, and, and, and I, you know, and I'm saying, dude, it, it's not even worth a mention. The whole story does not belong on the top thousand stories on the planet. But you know, it was it was really interesting hearing this uh, intelligent, uh, healthy, slim, 34 year old. Uh, who had been vaccinated uh, three times and gotten corona panic twice. Uh, you know, so, he, so he's like, so are you, and, uh, so then of course, I, and I said, and you understand that that 0.2%, if you, if you took out people over 70 and obese people, I said, neither of which you are, I, I said, if you took out uh, people over 70 and obese people, my guess is that a healthy, slim, 34-year-old man uh, has about a 0.00001% chance of, uh, of dying of corona panic. So, of course, he says, so what, are you telling me? I uh, should not be vaccinated, and I said, no, uh, I'm not telling you that at all. I'm, I'm telling uh, you the same thing I tell anybody else when this subject comes up, that if you look at the same information available to you that's available to me, and you are an adult uh, and, and can read, uh, and you can read the same information 
and you determine after looking at the facts uh, that it is in your best interest to get uh, any kind of vaccination, corona panic, anything else, you, you just determine that it's in your best interest to get the vaccine, get the vaccination. And uh, when and the second I read one iota of evidence, that is in my best interest to get, you know. So uh, then, of course, we, so then the whole subject of the lockdowns came up, and he, and he mentioned that his own grandfather had died uh, in late 2020. And I said, oh, I, I, I said, do you mean your grandfather died of COVID? And, and he goes, no, no. He, he goes, he didn't get COVID. That he just, uh, you know, the lockdown just, just literally like, like drove him insane. And, and he died. So I don't know if he committed suicide or what. And so then we got into that story and to that discussion and uh, he feels like probably about even that uh, the lockdown when you you know when you add in particularly drug overdoses from all of the mental health issues and whatnot that the lockdown uh, the lockdowns uh, were as were as, res if not more, responsible for more deaths than the virus that they were trying to keep people from getting. So he, he offers that opinion. Uh, so I said, well, but, and then he said, but the, the bottom line is, uh, you know, as <clears throat> far as, you know, he and his friends his age, that they all agreed that every one of them had a much better chance of dying every time they got behind the wheel of their gas-sucking car than uh, dying uh, of, uh, of corona panic. So they said they all agreed on that. So anyway, we wore out that discussion. And so he learned what bugs in a jar and what psyops and all of this means. And uh, <clears throat> then we had a short discussion that actually Rob was part of. You know, he was talking about, you know, growing up uh, in Israel and uh, how he has watched all of the countryside. I guess there used to be countryside in Israel that he's watched like every last scrap of uh, open countryside and farms and uh, what passes. I guess it's mostly desert, but you know what I'm talking about. Empty land get paved over, covered with housing and shopping malls, and that uh, it's so depressing and he just really wants to, you know, get out and get a little piece of land and blah, I said, well, good luck in New Haven, Connecticut doing that. Uh, but you know what I'm saying, he, he is clearly aware that uh, of what more and more humans on the planet means it means more houses it means more traffic it means less wilderness less rural atmosphere uh, he understands all that of course we uh, get, we got into uh, climate change he is absolutely not a climate change denier I mean one of the reasons he wants to get out of uh, Israel, that whole area of the planet, is be, and, and, and get his ass to uh, the northeast U.S. is because, uh, you know, he's a firm believer uh, in climate change, which he says, you know, uh, compared to climate change, that the corona panic, uh, it, you, you know, is nothing. He fully understands what's coming down the pike even for people his age, the shit that he's going to see at age 35. 
So he understands all this. He's not a clueless moron. Now he is a uh, a, a little uh, techno utopian apocalyptic hopium soaked limp dick lefty uh, who thinks Joe Biden is on the right track to save the planet. He is all of that, but you know what I'm saying. He's not completely clueless, and so. The conversation uh, ranges far and wide, and then it, it, it come, he comes out with the statement that the number one wish, the, the most overriding desire in his life is to have children. He wants to have three children. Now, of course, he is a gay man uh, moving uh, to a new country with another man, and he understands uh, what he's up against, and he says he doesn't care. Uh, his number one imperative in his life, knowing full well, uh, well, not not to the doomer level, but you know, somewhat doomer adjacent, knowing uh, about climate change and uh, the effects of too many people in a, in a landscape, uh, that his number one driving ambition is to father at least three children. He says he will probably stop at three children and, and you know my my jaw just drops and so you know obviously I hinted around about adoption and he understands that adoption would be a more sensible approach he uh, he understands the the expense of what he's talking about the trouble the heartbreak uh, he has no interest in adoption, and and, and I just said, dude, uh, I, I I said I'm sorry that that I have got to ask you why. I said obviously you are not a clueless moron. He did not know what the word moron meant. He didn't know what a lot of words meant. What is this moron you talk about, Sam? And uh. So I tried to uh, define the word moron uh, without saying somebody who realizes how completely fucked we are and uh, has his number one goal to father three children. I didn't say that, but I kind of implied that in the thing, you know, in my definition of the word moron. Uh, and... You know, I, I said, I, I said, I flat out do not understand how somebody of your uh, intelligence, your obvious keeping up uh, with current events and whatnot, uh, would would had would on any level be thinking of bringing even one child onto this planet in the year 2023, much less three of them. I, I said, I do not fucking get it, and I want to know what is driving you. And he shrugged, he looked right at me, and he said, because I am selfish, I am selfish, and I am afraid of being alone and that is the reason that uh, he wants to uh, he's already 34 he has no idea how to even start this process uh, he says the the fear of growing old alone uh, just is, is his number one fear in life 
bigger than the state of the planet, bigger than climate change, he is absolutely terrified of uh, growing old alone. Like his kids are going to be, you know, I, I don't know what he's thinking. And uh, so anyway, uh, so he asked, you know, he, so then of course he asked me if I had any children and laughed. And I said, I said, I got a vasectomy at age 22. He had no idea what a vasectomy was. Uh, he thought that what that, uh, he, he thought it had something to do with like in vitro fertilization, that I had some sort of, uh, you know, infertility problem. And I allowed, I said, you're goddamn straight, I have an infertility problem. I said, but it's not a problem, it's a solution. I have a fertility solution. Uh, and I described a vasectomy to him, and he was absolutely appalled. I mean, absolutely appalled that uh, that uh, I would voluntarily uh, get myself sterilized so I could never have a child and uh, so of course uh, he wanted to know if I regretted that decision you know that I made uh, 41 years ago and I said, I have never regretted that decision. It is the number one greatest decision I have ever made, bar none, in my entire life. And uh, the very thought of uh, bringing a child onto this planet in the year 2023, just, uh, I find that uh, even more terrifying than growing old alone. And that was pretty much the end of our conversation. So anyway, uh, he is off today. So before he left, he wanted to go check out my garden. Uh, you know, drip irrigation was invented in Israel. He wanted to see my drip irrigation system. And uh, so, you know, he was asking about, you know, was I planting fruit trees? And I, just, I said, dude, I'm 63 years old. I said, what's the point <clears throat> of planting a tree when you're 63 years old? And his retort to that was, so now you know why I want to have children. <laughs> Which I thought was a uh, was a touche answer. So uh, anyway, he left me a five star review. I did get the five star review in his note in the little you know the little guest registry in the tiny house. His note said, "You will live in my heart forever." <laughs> And uh, he got in his car and drove off into the rain <clears throat> for his next appointment with his next American to try to figure out his soon-to-be fellow Americans. And uh, I'm just wondering what his conversation uh wherever he lands tonight. He is heading to Pittsburgh uh, was his next stop. Uh, I would love to be a fly on the wall uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and compare the conversation he has with his vacation rental host tonight compared to the one he had last night. But I am back at the vacation rental paradise. Yeah, the, the guy mowed my grass for me yesterday. He was, you know, so thrilled to actually see grass. 
uh, you know, he's 34, he goes, I have not run a lawnmower in 10 years. So uh, he was absolutely thrilled to uh, mow my grass. So get out there and uh, mow your grass while you still can and try to figure out your fellow Americans while you're at it. Bye guys.